welcome um, to the YNC Black Caucus um, Lounging Chill event featuring Representative Zach Hawkins. Um, so I'm going to explain a little bit about YDNC Black Caucus. I'm going to turn over to Kelvin to kind of lay out the foundation of what's up tonight um, and what we're going to be talking about. Um, so basically YDNC Black Caucus is kind of like I would say sort of the liaison between um, young Democrats who identify as Black African American North Carolina um, and young Democrats as a whole. So what we do is we create a collaborative space where we can talk about issues that are affecting um, the Black and African American community here in North Carolina. Um, that space is for Black folks um, and our allies to just kind of be in community. Um, and we do that work primarily through programming um, in our general body meetings. So some of our programming includes um, this live stream tonight. And then also um, we've had town halls previously. We've collaborated with other caucuses. Um, and we are doing like meet the candidate forums. We have a lot of stuff planned for this cycle. Um, so this is just one of the opportunities that you will have to kind of engage with us and be in community with us. Um, so that's a little bit about the caucus. Um, and I didn't say this, but I am the chairwoman, Tia Canada. Um, I use she, her, her pronouns, and I am a graduate student at North Carolina State University. Um, so now I will hand it over to Kelly. Yes, I'm Kelvin Stallings. I'm the vice chairman. And um, just a little bit about this event. This event was put together just, you know, so we can talk to our um, public community leaders and elected officials in a capacity. We have town halls and, you know, a lot of town halls have preset questions or town halls have questions where we ask candidates um, questions that are politically and we expect answers that are politically correct. <laughs> this just creates a space where we can really get to know our candidates and get to know the people that um, lead us in our government on the day to day. So um, just hopping into it, um, we have representative Zach Hawkins here. You know, I had to give you preferential treatment. You're an ECU, ECSU Viking, you know. Hey, you know what? <laughs> not, all, not all heroes wear capes, you know. <laughs> Some of them just go to Elizabeth City State. So, no, I, no I, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate uh, the outreach, and, uh, and this is Viking Pride Amplified. And I really, um, you know, want to thank, you know, Young Democrats, uh, and the Black Caucus for, for thinking about me and including me because uh, this is our time. We got to step up. We got to be a part of the process. And so um, I'm, I salute you guys for you know putting your putting your feet forward to do this. Yeah. So so jumping straight into it, um, just just tell us a little bit about how did you get to this point? How did you become a state representative? And yeah. um, who who is who is Zach Hawkins outside of the office? Oh man, <laughs> well, that's a good question. That's a good question. So I'll, I'll take I'll take the first one first. Um, so, uh, I grew up in Chocowinity, uh, North Carolina, which is a town, small, small town in Eastern North Carolina, uh, 800 people. I graduated with about 39 of them. And, um, you know, I was in public, you know, service through SGA and those sorts of things. But what really, you know, got me engaged was seeing my grandmother who taught for 30 plus years and who also served on the school board for a while. She was involved in everything. My grandfather used to get so upset with her because she was always running out the door to serve somebody else. And, um, and then, you know, I went to Elizabeth City and, and that setting allowed, you know, this kid from a small town to grow just a little bit more. And so I was an officer, freshman, sophomore, and junior year for SGA. And, uh, and then my senior year, I was vice president of a student body. And, um, and I had the amazing opportunity to be initiated in the Lambda Gamma chapter of Omega Psi Phi fraternity. Um, <laughs> and so with that... You, you know, that's where we disagree. <laughs> yeah, that's where we disagree. That's where we disagree. I get it. I get it. I walked into that one. The, um, and so with, with that, during, you know, with, with having, you know, sort of all that, that build up, it was around 2000, Bush v. Gore. And so the North Carolina Democratic Party was making outreach to HBCUs for engagement. And so I got tagged to lead the voter engagement, voter registration efforts. And I was like, this is amazing, right? I'd already been doing this, but this was like a higher level. And when uh, we, we killed it, we had a high voter registration, we turned out that year. And I mean, of course we lost, but it was like, I had this bug for politics and was like, okay, all right, let's, let's see where this goes. I graduated, moved to Durham, went to the North Carolina Central University, Eagle Pride, and um, 
eventually got back into to politics um, by showing up at, at David Price's door, who's a member of, of the U.S. Congress. And so his staff and he, they put me to work um, and I just kept showing up and they kept giving me a job to do. And, you know, lo and behold, uh, after that, I started working as his field director for the next couple of cycles and then uh, got involved with the Young Democrats um, and with local races. And so through Young Dems, I um, joined the local chapter. I helped to found the original, um, what was then the Minority Caucus, Minority slash African American Caucus. So, so glad to see you guys picking this thing back up. And, um, and then after that, uh, I went on to be vice president of the Young Dems and, and president. And so, you know, through all that, though, I was meeting people that, people that I would never met across the state of North Carolina. But then locally, people were asking me, well, hey, can you help me on my campaign? And as I was helping Congressman Price, I was learning so much that I got exposed to so many people, both in Durham and statewide at the exact same time. And... Um, but you know what? What really sort of made me continue to do that was, you know, after I was in Durham a little while, my son had an injury, and you know, I was new to Durham. I didn't know what was going on, and so we, you know, we were like, "What is happening?" Like, you know, I felt helpless and hopeless as a dad, and nobody would help. No lawyers would take the case or anything like that. His arm was broken actually in daycare, and I said, "You know what? I'm never going to feel this way again." So that's why I started showing up and getting involved. But what I quickly realized is that people live, as I kept doing the work, people live their entire lives feeling like they're helpless and hopeless. And I said, so, you know, I need to be this kind of person who's using my talents and resources for good so I can help these people. And, um, and so that's the first thing. And then secondly, you know, going through Young Dens, uh, while I was president of the YDNC, I was also a teacher in the classroom. And so I heard all these candidates talking about education and, and what should be doing, what they were doing. And I was like, y'all are lying. I'm in the belly of the beast right now. I'm in the classroom dealing with the, the, the decisions that you made. And we're, we're letting incredibly bright students die on the vine. I had students from some of the roughest parts of Durham and some of the best parts of Durham. And they all had the same level of talent. And we just needed to be able to maximize and we weren't doing it. So anyway, um, I kept moving, became an officer with the state Democratic Party, ended up becoming first vice chair uh, in the, um, the buildup to trying to get us back to this point of breaking the majority, getting a Democratic governor. And um, through that, through all this journey, I built relationships. One of the most important relationships I built was with a me my mentor, Mickey Michal, who's the longest serving uh, member, former member of the North Carolina General Assembly and Larry Hall. They gave me so much, they poured into me over the years, over a series of years. And when he decided uh, to step down, uh, he, he supported me and, and endorsed me. And everyone else sort of came along. And it was, it's been a beautiful ride, and I'm glad I'm in a place uh, to be able to help. Now, who I am outside of all this, um, <laughs> it depends. So I'm, I'm uh, you know, daddy, I'm Z Hawk, depending to your friends. I'm, I'm a fraternity brother to the bros, my, my members of Omega Psi Phi fraternity. Um, you know, I'm a proud HBCU, double, double HBCU grad. Uh, I am, um, you, know, you know, passionate about, you know, just, you know, making change. I'm a good neighbor, right? I, I cut my yard. I, I put my, my trash up when I'm supposed to. Um, you know, I'm somebody who loves sailing. Um, I'm somebody who loves, um, you know, sailing and boating because I grew up in Eastern North Carolina. Um, I'm somebody that loves to run, uh, even though it kills me after I do it. Uh, but I'm trying to, you know, after I turn 40, I need to start working. You know, I need to start working for these muscles. They don't come easy. Um, but I'm, you know, other than that, I'm pretty, pretty relaxed, man. I, I, I love um, to, to, to make sure that I'm giving other people the opportunities that I got and even more. And that's one thing that I will never sort of give up on. That's why I always want to make time for people like y'all in the YDs because uh, this is where I got my start. And just like they poured into me, I need to be able to pour into y'all. All right, thank you. Um, I like that answer a lot, especially like, cause I feel like, I feel like we don't know the people that like are representing us. We don't know the people who are here to support us. Um, I feel like that's like a big thing, especially like 
in the black community just like having that trust in our elected officials who look like mm -hmm. us um mm -hmm. which kind of leads into my question um how do you balance like i don't want to say balance but like for lack of a better word balance your um blackness in like different spaces when you're representing people who may not think like you who may not look like you so how do you yeah. like find that balance yeah. how do you say treat yourself you know um and that's uh that is such an incredible question because i don't know if y'all know courtney crowder or not um he uh, was the first african-american president of young james and i was the second and so when we were running around sometimes we would be in completely would be in spaces where we're the only two black folks western north carolina eastern i mean you name it and especially young african-americans and so as you grow in the space of course you build yourself to fit in and etc and try to um you know make yourself uh you know make other people feel comfortable but after you get you know in to you know your your own skin and i think this generation is doing it incredibly well um you realize that you know, they say it all the time, like that you are your, you, everybody else are, are themselves. You're the only you. And so showing up authentically as yourself allows people and sometimes forces people to deal with diversity, to deal and understand with culture. Like I am not you. I had a completely different experience in my upbringing and in my education and in my life experiences as, a, as, a, as an African-American man. And I think that um, what I have learned uh, to do is is to show up that way, right? Like I, of course, am uh, you know, am respectful of, of everyone, but I'm not gonna you know change my voice, right, to suit anyone, right? Does that make sense? I'm not going to mm -hmm. um, to say um, you know anything that will offend anyone, of course, but I'm also not gonna shy away from from my values. And if if anything, what um, they what i'm able to do is learn a lot because i'm able and willing to reach out to and understand other people's cultures and perspectives etc and so that to, to be completely honest the the pathway that i've that i've taken um sort of has you know built me that way and and what i mean by that is you know when you grow up in a small town you don't have a choice you know, you know that being in goldsboro you don't have a choice everybody knows everybody plays sports together does that make sense and so you get a chance to know people from other mm -hmm. spaces and um and and again as we've gone through this process with young dems and all that you you understand where people are coming from from different parts of the state and so uh it's best to just be uh yourself but it it early on it was definitely a battle um because you want it so hard to not stick out uh you want it so hard not to um to to be the stereotype or or to be anything that someone would not want to engage with, but I, I would say to anybody right now that's listening that that, that is my best advice to you. Show up exactly who you are. You'll read the cues for the culture so that you can do what you need to, but never walk away from your blackness and your experience. And I think that's honestly the, the beauty of where we are now with the civic unrest. So, so, so kind of piggybacking off of that, how, how important would you say um, are the relationships that you built in being as, oh. as successful as you are in, the, in politics? It's, it's undeniable, undeniable, would not be here without it. Um, because what uh, the things, the nuggets that I was able to pick up, um, for example, when I was working with David Price, um, you know, I had to drive him around. So you got a chance to ask one of the smartest men in Congress questions, right? Okay. Um, and to learn and learn and learn game, right? Um, and understand his story behind, uh, behind the veil, right? You got a chance to really get a chance and get up close. Um, when you travel with someone like that and travel with other candidates and, and do campaign stuff, you realize, to your point, Tia, that I had to know and be sensitive to to Jewish issues, to and holidays, to African American things, the things that were happening in the Muslim community. Because the district was so large, we had to, you know, I had to know those things and make sure that um, that we could be reflective and responsive. And so you learn this multiculturalism. Um, you know, just like that. And so anyway, so that's the first thing. And I would say that the second thing is the nuggets, especially for people in our community that they share is, you know, the small things like, hey, don't rush into it. Make sure you get, you know, you have a job, you're, st you're stable. Uh, <laughs> make sure that, um, that you've got a good foundation because 
um, what you're telling people about running for office is that I can be trusted to make decisions and I will not embarrass you. I will best represent you. I, will, I, I am your liaison to those decisions and policy. And so you really do have to make sure that, that you can do that. And that's the kind of advice I got early on, even though it hurt my feelings in the <laughs> beginning because I thought I was ready early on. But um, I would say that those relationships have connected me to people. And one thing that I will say more than anything is your contacts will mature. And all those people that we were running around with um, early on with policy when I was teaching, when we were young Democrats, when campaigns, national, all those people are still involved. And they are still in places now where I can pick them up and call them as X, Y, and Z nationally, another house member, someone who's a policy advisor for the governor. Does that make sense? Yeah. And all those relationships made my mm -hmm. transition to the General Assembly incredibly much easier than they, it would have been. And so that kind of, um, uh, one thing that people used to do when I was uh, early getting involved is they would pick, pick and choose who they wanted to piss off. Don't do that, that's bad advice. <laughs> Don't ever do that because you're gonna need, you never know who you're gonna need later. But all those connections, even till now, have paid dividends. And so I'm I'm forever grateful and would not be here without any of them. Yeah, yeah. And like speaking to like just like being involved and like being like in this environment, what would you say to young black people who like want to get involved but don't know how? Like in terms yeah. of um, maybe Y and C because like a lot of my friends, you know, we're like twenty something, so we're all just like <laughs> want to get involved. We're ready to go, like we're fired yeah. right up. But a lot of us don't know how. And like, if you want to run for office, you have to have money to run for office. You know sure. what I mean? Sure. And that might not be feasible for other people. Um, so how do you like encourage folk to like be engaged and be involved? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think um, I think the first thing is you got to know what you're passionate about, right? And it may not be your total list of passions, mm -hmm. but if you are sick of money in politics, for example, and you're young, you're like, why does it cost so much money? Or why do you have to have money to get involved? And that, if you want to do that, then you start finding candidates and looking uh, for organizations that are doing that. I think the biggest thing that, um, uh, that people don't realize is there's a million different paths to get to this point. And so your path is your path alone. And um, it should be driven by what you care about and what you think um, is important to you and where you feel like you can, you can make that impact. And so that's the first, that's the first piece of advice. Uh, the second thing is, is show up. Show up. I will, and to Kevin, Kelvin's earlier question, that's part of, I mean, me and Courtney and a couple others and folks like that, we just kept showing up. And uh, the, the funny thing about it is if you keep showing up, people then expect you to show up. And then it becomes this, you, you, probably, you guys have done it. You, you come, go to meetings, and it's like, oh, man, I didn't see you last time. And so this expectation, like, oh, these people really miss me. They really think I'm something. And, <laughs> and so I think that, you know, that level of commitment of showing up teaches you long term that, um, you know, showing up and having your voice heard allows you to fill the gap for somebody who doesn't have time, Right. So it may seem like it's in vain to go all the, to these state Democratic Party meetings, which is another great way for people to get involved, by the way, um, to go and show up at a county party meeting. But you're filling the gap and having, making sure there's a perspective that's heard. And you, I cannot tell you how important that is um, when people are advocating. There are some bills in the General Assembly that get pushed forward just because somebody said something. Does that make sense? And so mm -hmm. by people finding exactly, not exactly, but just, throwing themselves in, showing up, and, and finding things that they're passionate about, get involved in a campaign, right? I don't care if it's soil and water or North Carolina labor, right? Whatever that thing is, get involved. Because I think sometimes what people try to do is they want to find the sexy thing. They want to go for president or, you know, or governor <laughs> or, or U.S. Senate, right? And you know what? North Carolina House and Senate members need love, too. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you know, commissioners of insurance need love too. Um, and county commissioners make just as big as city council make just as big as an impact as anybody else. And so I think that that's one thing is that once you establish it, you will be surprised at, oh, okay, you worked on this campaign? Great. Well, let me go ahead and get you 
plugged in on this next one because I'm looking for a campaign manager. And, and that's, and people, again, that's the story of my life is just showing up and being consistent. And I think that that is, um, it, that is, it's not scientific, but it really does start you down the road. And I'm a firm believer that everything else, if you continue to do that, will fall in place. And yep. this is not the time to stop to, to sit on the sidelines. And, and, and I know sometimes it seems like you're banging your head against the wall in the General Assembly. What what just uh, keeps you motivated, and, and and what makes you keep fighting? You know, uh, you know, to be honest, man, it's um, to, there are a lot of people. There there are a lot of my day ones that still believe in me, right? People that were there from the very beginning, um, who um, you know, by not showing up and doing what I'm supposed to do, I'm letting them down. Um, you know, my 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 mother, my grandmother, my family. I uh, made a lot of sacrifices to make my life possible. My HBCUs, of course, mm -hmm. are um, are depending on someone who's going to raise their voice and be representative for them. Um, I, to be honest, my family, too. I have two boys, two little boys with autism. And um, there are not many people who understand what that means, especially as a person of color. And, um, and so I'm, I want to make sure I'm showing up for them, but honestly, it, it, it also goes back to those what I told you in the beginning. When I was a young father and I felt helpless and hopeless, when I started to realize that other people felt this way too, and they felt this way all their lives, I said, nah man, that this can't be that can't be life. And so that stuck with me. And the other thing too is with education. I'll never forget this kid named Andre in my class when I was teaching. This kid, um, I, I stepped back and let him teach. Um, genetics for a class session. He's from a rough part of Durham. And he ended up, you know, getting justice involved um, a lot later and spent, you know, spent time. But I think about him because, man, if we had done everything we could do K through 12 for a kid like that, think about the genius that existed within him and others like him that our system did not, they just weren't in place as good as they could have been to, to maximize his, his potential. And so all that makes um, a difference. And the other, the last thing is these damn Republicans are crazy. That's one thing that motivates me <laughs> too. They are crazy. And um, I'd be damned if they're going to keep our state in the space where it is now. And that's, that, that's our daily reminder every time I walk in there. Most definitely. So we, 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 we're reaching a little bit of time. So um, is there any, how, how can people reach you? Um, is there anything that you want to leave with, with the audience and the people that tune in to listen to us tonight? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, one of the things, well, you can reach me, of course, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Zach Hawkins NC, Z-A-C-K-H-A-W-K-I-N-S-N-C. Um, my website is ZachHawkinsNC.com. Uh, um, we are everywhere. You, If you're looking for a way to, um, to Tia's point, to get involved, I have made um, my campaign that kind of place. Like, if you're looking for a place to land, you just want to learn some skills, um, I can either, you know, take people to join my team and help out on projects, or I will, um, and then loan you out, right, to other candidates who need it, right? Because that's what it's about, right? In in, a, in Durham, you know, we we are we work hard. Don't get me wrong to keep our constituents um, happy, but we also understand we have a big obligation to help other people. And so, if people are looking for that, I'm 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 here for that. Um, the thing I would also uh, say, and I think Tia uh, brought it up, is please show up as yourself. Um, do not, uh, you know, people, uh, you know, like to create lanes for you. Create your own. You're, you are your own space. You are your own being. Um, you are exactly who God created you to be. And um, sometimes it's important to hear that because sometimes we go through this process thinking we have to be one way or the other. And all people want you to be is somebody they can trust and somebody they think is authentic and that's going to do right by them and work hard for them. And so I would, I would definitely leave people um, with that um, as something. And then lastly, if they're looking for uh, another thing to jump into, we are trying to break the majority. Uh, we are trying to, in the North Carolina House and the North Carolina Senate, so find one of those housing Senate campaigns that need love, right? Everybody can't go for <laughs> And uh, jump in and make sure to, um, to give some of your time. Because if we break the majority, we can improve education for teachers. We can increase 
um, money for HBCUs and their programs and their facilities. Um, we can make sure the UNC system uh, gets back to being the beacon across the country. We can fight back on voting, you know, voting suppression. Guys, they, they don't want people to vote. They especially don't want people like us to vote. And so when you have that dynamic, it's really, really clear. But lastly, it's about Medicaid expansion. 750,000 people don't have access to health insurance. Look at what's happening to COVID. Mm -hmm. COVID. Mm -hmm. We got we have black and brown people dying, and then we then those same people have to go back as essential workers, and they're keeping the economy running, essentially. So how are we not, uh, you know, making sure we we cover the healthcare gaps, and then how are we not paying these people fifteen dollars an hour? They are literally they are literally what do they say? Put they're putting Def Jam on their backs. And for North Carolinians, especially Republicans, to not um, uh, value that everyday worker is just something that is too disrespectful for me. Um, so I would think that for folks um, that, again, if you want to be left with anything, absolutely, that's something uh, that we can do. Um, but yeah, guys, I'm, this, this has been great. I thought y'all were going to ask me about my playlist and who's in my... I, I, didn't know, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to expect in the lounge. I thought that was, that was Tia's first question. I, I, I ain't have no clue what Tia was going to pull out, but... <laughs> um, no, but thank you, Representative Hawkins, for, like, being, like, real about these things because I feel like a lot of times people don't see that. I think that's important. Yeah. Um. So once again, thank you so much. Um, and thank you all for watching tonight. It's been a good time. You know, the question is there real chill, real slight. Um, but again, important to get to know the people who are um, here representing us. Um, and also make sure that you um, look up the other videos in this series. We'll be posting them um, shortly. And we'll have other special guests. Um, and you can do that by following the YNC Black Caucus um, Facebook page. So yeah, that's all I got. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you all for coming. All right. Thank you, guys. Take care.